Hi, and welcome to the weekly Stock Scores Market Analysis, plus this week's topic, how to make short-term market predictions. What I'm going to show you today is a little bit about how I predict where the market's going to go in the next few days. It's actually not that complicated once you understand some simple concepts. Now, markets tend to move in waves of upward and downward sloping price channels. And we'll see this in a moment when we look at the chart of the S&P 500. We'll go up for a few days, down for a few days, and you'll get movements along those waves based on whether price is running away from the channel trend line or at the channel trend line. You know, if price runs away from the channel trend line, it is likely that price will move back to the trend. If the trend line is eventually broken, then the market direction will likely change and we're on to a new wave. So you have these waves of up and down price action that can be drawn with price channels. So what we're going to do now is just draw out those price channels and look for how price moves around those lines. So what I've done is I've created here a 15-day, 30-minute chart. You can see up at the top left there, that's the time frame that we're trading. This is as of Friday, January 10th. And let's begin by highlighting the upward sloping channel that the market finished to end 2015. I can just draw a little line across the bottoms like that and a parallel line across the tops. What you see is that we had price at the bottom of the channel. It rose up to the top of the channel, got stuck, falls down to the bottom of the channel, gets stuck, goes up to near the top. And then we start to see that it is losing momentum. The upward price action there isn't like it was over here. Now, ultimately, you break down through the bottom of the channel right there from a falling top. So there was a new high, there was a falling top, and there was the breakdown which came right before the end of 2015. And then the next day, which was the last trading day of 2015, we had a gap down which now put the market into a new downward sloping channel. And I can take this line and just sort of draw it along like that. I'm drawing this freehand so it doesn't look exactly like it should. And I can draw a parallel line like this. And what happens then is we come up to the channel, which really defines the channel. We need two points to define a trend line. Here's our first one, and here's our second one. That's where the market got stuck the second time. And then we had that big drop to start the year on Monday, January 4th, moving it to establish a bottom boundary of the channel. Now then price came back up, but notice how it got stuck at the line that was defined by the first two inflection points. We call these inflection points, which are little tops along the way. At this point, I know that the market is likely to move lower. And the reason I can say that is because we have risen up to the top of a downward sloping channel. And that's exactly what happened the next day. We had another gap down. And at that point, the market was oversold because it was running down and away from the channel. It was near the bottom envelope of that channel. And so we had a little rise up until we hit the downward trend line, and then we rolled over and went down again. Next day, gap down. At the, <clears throat> at the down gap that morning, my thought as a trader was the market will likely move up from here because it is at the bottom level of the channel. It was down near the bottom of that channel. So that's what happened over the next hour and a half. The market went up until it starts to get towards the top of the channel. And again, I didn't draw these lines very well. I should probably have this line more like this. Um, so when it hits the top of the channel, it sells off. When it gets down to the bottom, it gets oversold, likely to move up. There it moves up to the new channel line, which we can draw there. I could probably erase some of these lines just to make this a little bit more clear. Let's just draw this sort of new channel that was forming like this. And you know, channels will change their, their slope in time. There was the initial channel, and then it came narrower, but also steeper. So there we're at the bottom, rises up to the top, gets stuck. That means it's likely to go down gets down to the bottom line, that means it's likely to find support and the profit takers on the short side will come in. Uh, the people that were short the market will cover their shorts. The bargain hunters will buy stocks. That's what causes the little uplip the next morning. But that uplip doesn't break the downward trend line. They get stuck there and we move back down again to the bottom of the channel, get support, moves up to the top. That happened Friday midday. Midday it hits the top of the channel and then into the close it rolls over. So. Where are we now? Well, we're at the bottom of that channel or close to it. That means come Monday, we will probably open somewhere in here. We might gap up. If we gap up to the top of the channel, we'll probably get stuck. And it's all a question of probability. 
So what will probably happen Monday is it will move up at some point in the morning, whether it gaps down to start the day to get to the real bottom of the channel before it moves up, that's the question. But ultimately, I think we'll test this upward trend line, or pardon me, downward trend line at the top of the channel right there. Now, for this trend to reverse, and again, we'll erase some lines here, we need to do what, well, the inverse of what happened back here. And that is break this downward trend line from a rising bottom. So if we make a new bottom Monday morning, and then Monday midday, make a little rising bottom, and then break the downward trend line, that would be a sign that the trend is reversing. Just like what happened here, where we had an upward trend line, we made a falling top, and then a breakdown from a falling top, that's what started that market lower. So that's how I do my daily predictions, and I'm pretty good at seeing where the market's gonna go in the next few days, just using these simple concepts of channels, where price is in the channel, is it at the top or the bottom of the channel, and that'll give you a clue as to where the market is going to go in the short term. All right, let's do the analysis for this week. Well, big week, obviously, big sell-off this week. We have a falling top. All right, if I draw the long-term, whoops, draw the long-term upward trend line, we're basically right at that trend line. So if the market does not reverse next week, if it goes down into here, we'll have a clear-cut break of the five-year trend, that's huge, from a falling top. That will point to more selling to come. However, we haven't broken it yet. We tested those that trend line in August. We may test it again here. But don't think that it, it's okay if it holds the August lows, because if it holds the August lows for the week but ends up closing down there, that's a break of the upward trend line. You know, the, the days of using horizontal support and resistance are over. They don't work as well as they once did. Ten years ago, I was all about horizontal support and resistance. Nowadays, I look at trend line resistance because that is what tends to work a lot better. So right now, we've got trend line of support right here. And if we don't hold that, if next week we close down in here, uh, it could get ugly. It could, however, go down through the week and end up coming back to close the week above the trend line. So don't think that if on Wednesday we're down below that line, that means the story's over for the bulls because it could still make a resurgence. Here's a chart of the Russell 2000. Of course, this is a small cap stocks. And there you can see that little break of this trend line from a falling top. That points to more weakness ahead for the small cap sector in the US. The Toronto Stock Exchange, obviously closely correlated to the price of oil with oil moving to new lows, you've got a lot of weakness in the Canadian market. There is your downward sloping channel. There is really no sign of relief. You know, you get moves here where you get to the bottom of the channel, you move up. Here we're at the bottom of the channel, we kind of went sideways to get to the top of the channel. And that's an important point about channels, by the way. It doesn't have to go up from the bottom. It could go sideways until it gets to the uh, upper envelope of the channel before it rolls over and heads down again. This looks to me like a market that is more likely to go lower than higher early next week. It's not out of the question, of course, that it could break through the top of that channel, but it hasn't formed a rising bottom yet. And that's why I think it's more likely that we will move lower to start next week. We're always about trading probability. It's 65% chance that this moves lower early next week, 35% chance it breaks to the upside. TSX Venture, um, you know, just if I made this chart longer term, you would see just how ugly it is. It did break the downward sloping uh, trend line there. That's a positive, and that was mostly because of gold. TSX Venture has a lot of mining stocks, a lot of gold mining stocks, and it got some support from that. So even though the junior energy sector on the TSX Venture suffered, the, the mining sector kind of propped everything up. So we got a little bit of a rise here, um, but it's not off of a rising bottom. So that break of trend was from a new low. If we now form a rising bottom here and then break through that, well, that would be positive for a little bit of a bounce back in the TSX Venture stocks. And the gold sector is really what it's all about. We'll talk about gold in a moment. Here is the uh, Treasuries, U.S. Treasuries. This is a 36-month uh, uh, chart, three-year chart. And you can see we're in a pennant right now. We're at the top of the pennant where markets should find some resistance. The trend into the pennant was up, and therefore the likely direction of the pennant out is up. That's typically how I do this analysis. That means interest rates go down if this goes up. So 
We had a little bit of a rally last week, probably a flight to quality as people moved out of stocks and into the safety of U.S. Treasuries. A little bit of strength there to end the week. But is it enough to break the trend line? Not quite. It's close. We'll see what happens next week. Nice thing is rising bottom. Okay, there's a new low. There's a rising bottom. If it can break up through this line, then we could see this move higher, which means, again, interest rates going down because as this goes up, interest rates go lower. U.S. dollar uh, actually started the week strong but finished the week with weakness, and it's got a falling top here. I would say that's a fairly minor uh, situation. We still have an upward trend line that is intact, but if we get a strong move down through this area, that would be supportive for things like oil, supportive for things like gold, and that would be a break of the upward trend from a falling top. That would be significant. These are all what-ifs because none of this has happened yet. As it stands right now, this is a bullish chart for oil, or pardon me, for uh, uh, the U.S. dollar, which means a bearish chart for oil. Um, but something could change here. I'm very uh, um, noticeable. What's very noticeable about this chart is that falling top there. So watch this chart closely. If we get a break of this upward trend line, that means U.S. dollar is going to have some weakness, and uh, it'll be supportive for commodities. The gold chart, there's the strength. I mean, if you were trading gold stocks this week, you probably had some fun because there was some good action to the upside. But in the context of the long-term trend, you still haven't broken that downward trend line. We're moving off of lows. We're not moving up off of rising bottoms. And look, if this is our downward sloping channel, every time we get to the top of the channel, we get stuck and we're getting there again. And so the probable thing to happen is we come up a little bit, roll over and continue in that downward trend. So. You know, all of these things are pointing to this just being a short-term rally. If, and this is the if, the big if, if we can break that trend line finally, move up into this region, then I'll stop being such a bear on gold. But for now, I have to stay in the bear camp. Oil, there we have it, moving to new lows. Nothing but falling tops. No rising bottoms. This chart is just a uh, falling top after falling top. And that means stay away from it on the long side. But it also means this is getting oversold. Eventually, it will bounce. I mean, we had that little bounce there. That was a nice little rally for the energy stock. Some of them moved 30, 40% in that little bounce there. So as a trader, we want to watch for that. If there is some sign of strength in oil, it can make a quick pop. As so many people are short, they will rush in, cover their shorts, and you'll get a little rally. With that said, I see no reason to take that position today. That could change Monday, but for now, stay bearish on oil. And here's fear. Uh, the VIX is the fear index. It shows how nervous investors are about the future. As this goes up, you have fear. That's August when we had the August correction. Went a lot higher than it has so far. But notice we had a new low, a rising bottom, and we've now rallied through this resistance zone. And so that shows that fear is picking up. We could see this move higher. If the market continues to correct, this is the thing, whoops, this is the thing that you want to trade. Um, the VXX is where there's lots of action yeah, for the trader who wants to take advantage of a correction. So I'm always trading the VIX. You can also trade the UVXY, the TVIX. They all do the same thing. XIV is the inverse. I'll trade those things during a market correction. So what are my ratings? I am bearish on U.S. stocks, both long and short term. Pretty oversold right now, so we could see that bearish jump to neutral if we get a little bounce back early next week. Canadian stocks bearish on both time frames. Gold, I'm bearish long-term, but actually bullish short-term because of that little rally we've been having. That's something that you can trade if you are a day or a swing trader. If you are anything more than that, anything longer term than a few days, stay away from this stuff. It's just too volatile in the short term to really be able to take advantage of it. Oil, bearish on both time frames. Strong downward trend, you want to stay clear. Fear is accelerating as investors rush out of stocks. The trends are down, but stocks are also oversold. So a short-term bounce is likely soon. However, the long-term breakdown in U.S. stocks is important, so be cautious. Canadian stocks heavily oversold, but show no sign of a bottom. And gold is strong in the short term, but not so much in the long term yet. And oil continues to be ugly. Well, that has been the Stock Scores Market Minutes for January 11th, 2016. Have a great week in the market and trade well.